Hello, hello, happy Monday, y'all, and welcome to FPP Live, a time I connect all things faith, purpose, and profit. I'm live every Monday at 7 p.m. EST to pour into you. So as you come in, you guys know how I do. Uh, say hello, tell me name and where you're from. If as I share, by the way, if you see me look over here, that means I'm looking at comments. <laughs> I say something that resonates with you. You have a question, a comment, please, by all means, a post away. So with that, today I'm continuing a series I started in June. The series is called The Kingdom Principle Needed to Build a Successful Business. The Kingdom Principle Needed to Build a Successful Business. I wonder if you realize that God created you to be successful. Mm -mm, he didn't intend for us to be average. He didn't intend for us to settle for mediocre. But God is going to let you live on whatever level you settle for. Yeah, I'm going in out, out of gate. <laughs> so then this series, and by the way, if you've missed any uh, part one or part two, this is it was going to be a four part series. But this part today is what I would call the chorus, like the bridge, you know, in a song, there's always a chorus. So this is the bridge. Hey, Kim in Richmond up the street from me. Hey, girl. Hey, <laughs> Kimberly, I should say. So listen. If you missed part one and part two, go and watch it on my YouTube channel. You see it there on the screen, nrjnetwork.com. All right. So part one, quick review. I'm not going to tell you everything. I taught. I always give you three points at minimum in each of the parts. So part one was the 10% more rule. Mm -hmm. So listen, God is always looking at what you will do with what he's given you and not just what will you do, but how will you expand it? That's that 10% more. Then our last conversation a couple weeks ago, because last week was a holiday, was the truth about growing past your potential. See, a seed is potential. If you don't water the seed and do what it takes to grow the seed, then the seed will never move past its potential. That's the same thing with your purpose. It's been planted in you, but you've got to grow past the potential. Okay, so listen, you need part one and part two, as well as part three and four, which I'm going to walk you through. But this is the bridge, y'all. This is the chorus. And so our conversation tonight is the power of one. See, you know, what's interesting is the number of people that I meet in this thing called life as I get to coach and teach people around building their purpose focused business. I call it your look. Listen, I call it bankrolling your brilliance. As I get to coach and teach people, the number of people that either don't understand what their one thing is, they don't know what their niche is, their purpose is, the one lane God created you to dwell in, or they are overlooking parts of it. So how do you grow 10% when you don't even know what it is? How do you understand to grow past potential when you don't even know what your potential is? So even the, the principle, by the way, I didn't even tell what the principle is that I'm teaching you from is seed time and harvest. Genesis 8, 22, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. So what's interesting is, is seed time should be two separate words because it's seed, time, and then harvest. And so this course is really kind of about time but it's really looking at, are you focusing on what you need to focus on? So a quote that you probably have heard before, a jack of all trades is a master of none. You know, what's interesting is the whole quote reads like this. Okay. Here's the whole quote. A jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one, which is not true. Let me tell you why. That quote was actually written about William Shakespeare. They said that because, you know, what do we all know William Shakespeare for? Think about it. What do you know him for? You know him as a playwright, right? We know him for all the plays he wrote. But the reason they wrote this is because what Shakespeare would often be found doing was he'd be in the theater helping the stagehands put the, put the stage together. He'd be helping the director direct the play. He'd be doing all the things to help the other elements of the play, but keep in mind, I said help. He wasn't running the stage direction. He wasn't being the director. He wasn't doing all the other things. His gift was that one thing that we know him for today, which is a playwright. I think what people mistake so much is all the little things they do and not the power of the one thing. Those of you that have been around me, you know, I call it the Diana Ross and the Supremes because there's only one Diana, just like there's only one Beyonce and Destiny's Child. Come on, somebody, right? Hey, Pat from Florida. So I need y'all to get this. 
There is one thing that will propel you forward when you focus on it, grow it, nurture it. See, God gives it to you as a seed. And it's up to you to do what it takes to grow it. And it's all about your focus. So you probably have seen focus and you probably have seen it like this. Or at some point, you know, people say focus means fo follow one course until successful. But I'm going to shift that. I'm going to shift that and say that it, it should mean focus on your calling until successful. I see so many people who start businesses and they shift stuff. <laughs> Pat, Pat said, glad I saw the notification for this. I'm telling you why I'm laughing. Appreciate you, Pat. Hey, Betty in Alabama. So listen, I need y'all to get this. Focus on your calling until successful. I see so many people that quit before success can come. It's like, you know, when you get a seed, it's in the ground. You got to water it and water it and water it and go through see nothing days. If you stop watering it, the seed never grows. It takes you doing what it takes no matter what, even when you can't see what's possible. So when we look at the power of one, I want to give you three things you've got to do if you're going to be successful, if you're going to focus on your calling until successful. If that's going to be your focus, if you're going to really master the one thing that God has created you to do in this world, he hasn't called you to do many things. He's called you to do one thing, the things that might be around it, but it still is one thing. Okay. So the first thing you've got to do is look at how, how do you see it? How are you focused on it? How are you looking at it? Okay. And I could even say, how are you overlooking it? So there's a story in the Bible. I'm going to read around it. It's Numbers chapter 13. I'm not going to read all of it. This story comes at a time. So we've all heard the story of Moses who got all the children of Israel. We got them out of Egypt. Give us us free. Got them out of slavery. <laughs> that was my Amistad joke. Some of y'all didn't get that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so and got them out of slavery. They're out. And remember, God promised them the promised land. So now they're on the edge of the promised land. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all are on the edge of the promised land called your purpose right now. But you, you might be like these spies that Moses sit. So Moses sends out 12 spies to go check out the land before they go. Okay, so this is Rome again, Romans. This is Numbers 13. I'm starting at verse was one uh, through three. I'm going to skip around, okay? So you can read the whole chapter, but again, I'm going to skip around because of time. Okay. So the Lord said to Moses, send men to explore Canaan, which I'm giving to the Israelites, Israelites, send one leader from each other ancestors tribes. So at the Lord's command, Moses sent these men from the desert of Paran. All of them were leaders of the Israelites. Okay. So he sent them out. Now, 40 days later, when they come back, here's what they say they saw. Okay, now I'm at verse 27. Y'all with me? 1327. I'm skipping a lot because then it lists who the people are. We don't care about their names. I want you to get the story. <laughs> okay. This is what they reported to Moses. Again, this is verse 27. We went to the land where you sent us. It really is a land flowing with milk and honey. So God promised, right? Here's some, here's some of his fruit. So they gave him some fruit. But the people who live there are strong and the cities have walls and are very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there. So in other words, they're saying, oh my God, we can't. And he, they go on to say, we can't beat them. They're, they're strong. But Caleb told the people to be quiet. And listen to Moses, Caleb said, let's go now and take possession of the land. We should be more than able to conquer it. So group said, oh, we can't, we can't conquer this. They're too, they're much stronger than us. They're smarter than us. I can't start a business. Somebody will see that I don't know what I'm doing. Or I need that all the excuses you would make about your business is like you being one of those leaders. Now, mind you, they were leaders. They weren't regular folk. They were leaders, y'all. Still second guessing the land of milk and honey that God promised them. But Caleb said, oh, no, we can take them. Mm-hmm. And so what's interesting about Caleb to me is when God promises you something, it, you, it, listen, God is always going to put you in a place where you got to have faith to get it. Always. And I believe that God does it to see if you're going to trust yourself or you're going to trust him. Are you going to trust the gift God gave you? Or are you going to trust what you can see? There's a Bible verse, Romans 12, I think it's one and two. I didn't write this down. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, the world would say one thing, but God will say something oftentimes contradictory to what the world says. What you going to believe? 
See, Caleb was willing to believe God. Oh, we can take them because that's our land. We're meant to possess it. All the other folks were like, I don't know. They look kind of strong, y'all. As I need you to understand, it's all in how you see it. So because I, I, listen, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing this for a really long time. And I want you to get that. So many people I see in this journey called entrepreneurship get stuck here. I'm holding something. This will be my eighth year holding this summit. It's a free bankroll your brain summit. I'm going to play a quick commercial that I'll give you the other two steps. So hang tight. Let me play this segment for you. And uh, we'll continue with our conversation. Yes, two weeks from today, those of you that are here with me live, or if you'll watch later tonight, I'm gonna put up the shorter link. So you can write, you can write out bankrollyourbrainsummit.com or you can write bybsummit.com. Either way, it goes to the same page. So of a simple 16 women plus me, all who are in the journey, just like many of you, some of you haven't started yet, some of you are just starting out. Some of these women are 10 steps ahead of you, some of them are 50 steps ahead of you. But what I've asked them all to do is they come in and share is to share their journey, to share how they had to stop overlooking or, or move through. And I'm gonna walk you to the other two steps. I hold this summit because I know what it's like to have to do it afraid, to have to look at God and look at God in the face of fear and say, God, I trust you. I, I'm gonna look past what I can see and trust you. Hey, Miranda, Miranda is one of the people that are sharing in the summit, y'all. BYBsummit.com is where you go, okay? So let me finish this because I'm always clear that I wanna be here for 30 minutes of actionable insight because y'all are busy and I want you to get back to your Monday. So number one is what, y'all? How do you look at it? How do you see it? It's all in how you focus. So again, the children of Israel, um, the, the Israelites, <laughs> Moses sent out 12 leaders, it, some verses say 10 came back, but I only saw one that said something positive. So I don't know. But anyway, 10 came back and said, oh, no, we can't do this. Mm -mm, those people are too big. They're going to beat us. But one said, oh, we can take them. It's all in how you see it. You know, the Hebrews 11 one says faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So will you trust God or will you trust what you can see? Will you trust your eyes or will you trust the God who created your eyes in the first place. <laughs> anyway, number two, <laughs> you have to alleviate distractions. See, sometimes things happen around you to you to distract you from your purpose. You know, many of you may have gone through things in your childhood, or maybe you have a boss that doesn't appreciate your brilliance, or maybe you started a business one time and you failed. All of those are distractions. See, the enemy is going to put up distractions to keep you from being all that God intended, because I need you to understand this. When you become the thing that God has created you to do, or when you do the thing that God has created you to do in this world, the people that will be blessed by you. I want you to think about it for a minute. What would this world look like if all of us were 100% who God created us to be? Matter of fact, you know, in Genesis, the first chapter, it talks about the fact that we were made in God's image. Now, none of us is 100% God, but each of us are little tiny reflectors, little tiny reflectors of God. So we fully let our light shine and we're reflecting God in us. I need you to get this, y'all. Listen, think about what a dim light looks like. Because that's what that light is, that reflection of God in us. 
Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light shine. All these Bible verses are pumping in my head right now, y'all. Sorry, I'm going all the way in. I didn't mean to say these many Bible verses, but they're popping in my head. So I believe when stuff pops in my head, that's God telling me to tell you. So <laughs> Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine, which is why I call what I do brilliance in the first place. Let your light so shine among men and women that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. That's that brilliance. So a fuzzy dim light, you can barely see it. If I took the, all the lights I have on in here right now, even if I put my hand over this light, see the difference in that side over there? How, how hazy that gets, see my candles over here? Because my light is covered. But see, a really bright, focused light, if you take a light and you focus it, it concentrates in one place, what will happen? That one place will catch on fire. So if the enemy can distract you and dim your light, look at my candles over here. Oops, where's my light? There it is. That's how many lights I have in here, right? <laughs> if he can dim that light, that means that somebody's life is not going to shift. Somebody's business is not going to shift. Somebody's family won't get saved. Somebody's career will be in limbo. But when you let that light shine, that fire that gets caught by that person, y'all, mm, so good, right? So this is why I believe that Paul said this. He had a vision and a goal ahead of him when he wrote Philippians 3, 13 through 14. I, brethren or sisters, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press, meaning I'm a fight, I'm a push. The, the Israel, the spies that Moses sent were like, mm -mm, we're not pressing, we're not pushing, but Kate, Caleb, said, oh, I'm a push. We could take them. I'm a press for the mark. That mark was that land of milk and honey that God promised to them. Y'all getting me? Even if you read through all the stories of Jesus in the Bible, you know how many times that the enemy tried to distract him? By the way, if I'm, I'm, if I'm good, y'all listen, I'm the kind of person when I'm in church, I'm loud. If you ever see me at a speaking event, I'll be like, talk to the speaker. Why? Because I'm not here for me. So if I'm saying stuff that resonates with you, I want to know y'all give me some hard say, girl, you going in. If I'm stepping on your toes, tell me that too. <laughs> so listen, Jesus was always being distracted. People were always trying to put Jesus on their agenda, not God's agenda. But Jesus would not let himself be distracted. One of the stories I pulled just to read here is Luke 4, beginning at verse 42. Now, when it was day, he, to my Jesus, departed and went into a deserted place. And the crowd sought him and came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities. Also, because for this purpose, I have been sent. Jesus was not going to let himself be distracted. He was not going to let himself be thrown off his path. And that's the same challenge I'm giving to you today. Is it fear that's trying to keep you from starting your business? Is it you being comfortable? Listen, one of my favorite quotes, Stephen Furtick, is fear is not the enemy of faith. It's familiarity. Mm. You know why? Because you feel familiar and comfortable. And so you won't be uncomfortable to do the thing that God is telling you to do, which by the way, going back to them Israelites, they wanted to stay comfortable. They were scared. So they let fear tell them they couldn't take it, take those people instead of sitting still. This is why I always talk about having being time, y'all, and letting God direct your path. Mm -hmm. Right? So, Jesus is not going to let himself be interrupted. And my question to you is, will you let yourself be interrupted? So again, again, these are the things you've got to do to stand in the power of the one thing God created you to do in this world. I'm going to give you some great insight and I'm going to go dig deeper next week. This is the bridge because I see so many people that don't stay focused and they let themselves be a girl interrupted pretty much, right? Alleviate distraction. But what just came to my head is girl interrupted. Y'all remember that movie? <laughs> the last thing, number three, is you've got to stop comparing yourself. One of my favorite quotes is comparison is the thief of joy. That's Theodore Roosevelt. Comparison is the thief of joy. Listen, God did not create us to be like anybody else. Now, are there are other people that do what we do. Yes. There's no new idea under the sun, but you've got to understand there's a unique way that you bring to it that nobody can be or do but you. But if you don't stand in it sure enough, clear enough, and do you in it, 
the nobody will get to feel or experience or be blessed by your brilliance. I remember I had hired a coach and I remember my coach said to me, Ooh, why are you, why are you being sister girl? Cause that's who I am. I'm a sister girl. I am from South Central LA. You get a little bit of her and you get a little, I'm a little bougie, a little ratchet. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm both. And that's who I am. <laughs> Every now and then, even though my team talks about me, I like ratchet music, even though I'm like, ooh, did they just say that word? Ooh, then I feel like my mother. But I like the, the music if I didn't have to hear all them lyrics. <laughs> but you get a little, so, you know, my the term I've coined is I'm bougetto. I'm bougie and ghetto all rolled, rolled, rolled into one. And I have no problem being her 24-7, 365. But see, when I used to be ashamed of where I was from. When I used to not want to tell people where I was from, when I used to not own all that I am, listen, God did not make a mistake when he created me, just like God did not make a mistake when he created you. Psalms 139, 14 says, I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. If I'm praising God for being fearfully and wonderfully made, that means that no mistake was made. That everything was intentional by God. There are things that I'm great at and there's things that I'm horrible at. And am I, the question is, and the same for you, there's things you're great at and things you're horrible at. <laughs> but the question is, are you okay with that? There are times that I say a word on one of these lives, I'm like, ooh, does that word exist? And I'm like, ooh, nope. And people are like, Nicole, you're funny. No, that's real. I, I make up words. But I'm comfortable in my imperfection. I always say the minute I'm perfect, I'll be sitting next to Jesus. And if you get there before me, save me a seat. But there's no way I'm going to be perfect. As long as I'm in this flesh, I'm going to be battling imperfection. I'm going to be battling distractions. I'm going to be battling not feeling good enough. But when I remember who God is and that he was intentional and that I was made without a, and the mold was broken. Just like when you were made, God broke that mold too. <laughs> Then I can stand in the power of who I am and what I'm created to be. I say this all the time. I don't know if I've said this in this group in a while, but listen, many of you discount your brilliance and a Bentley never goes on sale. Do you ever see a Bentley commercial on TV? Never, never, never. I never see. And if I do see a Bentley commercial, it's not because they're having a sale. Then I do with some Labor Day weekend, some Fourth of July sale. No, nope, uh -uh, never. Not a Bentley. Mm -mm. Well, equally, God created you and you are God's Bentley. Do you own your value? Will you stop sit, settling for good enough? Yes, you can be successful and still be settling. Because although you might already be making six figures, God has more for you. And so the power of the one is you doing the work it takes. That's why I'm inviting you to join me starting in two weeks, Bank While Your Brand Summit, so you can hear the journey of other women who are just ahead of you in this journey, women that have done it afraid, women that have failed and yet picked themselves up and kept moving forward, women that were willing to do what it takes to be the highest and best version of who God created them to be. Listen, I want to end with this. As a quote that T.D. Jake said once, and it says, if you don't discover your passion, your purpose and power, then, you're, then you will pursue the roles assigned by other people's scripts. If you don't discover your passion, your purpose, your power, then you will pursue the roles assigned by other people's scripts. See, I'm not trying to start anybody else's movie. I want to be in my own. I don't want anybody else to be the author of the definition that, find, that, that defines my life. I want to pick up a pen. As a matter of fact, I want God to be writing, moving my hand as I pick up the pen <laughs> to define who I am and what I be and how I do what I do. And I'm inviting you in that same journey. Those of you that haven't started your business yet, because maybe you're afraid you can't see how you're in the right place. I got you. Join us for the Bank While You Bring Summit. Those of you that have started your business and you have failed miserably, I'm going to tell you my story of failure. Those of you that haven't heard it, as we start the summit next, uh, not next Monday, two weeks from today, BYB Summit, totally free. And it will not be in this Facebook group. It will not. You have to sign up. It'll be on its own separate page. Oh, and I'm giving you a workbook. Because I could care less if you're motivated or inspired from anything I ever teach you if you don't activate a thing. So that's our conversation for today. The power of one. God called you to do one thing. You got to focus on that one thing and you've got to be like, listen, it's almost like a dog on a bone. If you give a dog a bone, you try to pull that bone from that dog, that dog is, you can't get it out of his mouth. 
or her mouth. <laughs> so you've got to be like a dog on a bone about your purpose about the one thing God's created you to do in this world. And if you don't know what it is, you got to be like a dog on a bone to get clear about it so you can be about it. That's a one thing, one mission God gave each of us in this world. The one mission God gave each of us is to focus on your calling until successful. That's it. To focus on your calling until successful. So as I always do, (laughs) <laughs> As I always do at the end of every episode, I want to hear the value you got out of today. If you have questions, by all means, post them here. I come back and read every comment. Why? Because I'm going to hear from me. I'm here for you. I want to make sure everything I'm sharing with you gives you the insight that you need to move your business forward. Why? Because when you do the thing that God has created you to do, listen, profit means gain. And ultimately what you're doing is gaining for God. God's gift back to you is a profit that happens in your business. Mm, yeah, I got more insight on that too. So with that said, y'all, <laughs> thank you for joining me for this episode. Got two more steps, y'all, in this series and the Bank While You Bring Summit, which will happen two weeks from today, 8 p.m. EST on its five days, by the way. This is Monday through Friday, the July 24th through the 28th. Every night in the replay will stay up until Sunday, July 30th. Oh, and I have some more gifts for you that I'm giving away during the summit, Ah, but you got to be in it to get it. So with that said, y'all have a phenomenal rest of your Monday. I'll see you next week as we continue this series. Bye y'all.